scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. And I sincerely believe with all my heart that that is why we are here. I come here because I recognize my need for wisdom I recognize that it is only in his presence and only when his word is accurately communicated the principles of the word are accurately communicated not the information the information has no power to produce change you see let me tell you something when people do not have faith it is not because they do not believe God there is a level of accuracy with which the word of God was designed to be communicated. And if that word is communicated properly, there is a spiritual logic to it that becomes the basis upon which the faith of the people are grounded. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, he says, but in the demonstration of power that your faith will not be grounded upon the wisdom of men, Sophia, wisdom that is a product of education experience that is limited suggestions of men opinions that were based on a very short view but the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled it never said it's settled in the earth it's settled in heaven it takes doing what heaven has done to make the word settle in our lives. In the name of Jesus. So I welcome everyone. Thank you for coming as always. Those following us online and thousands of people. We love you. We honor you. Let your hearts be open. Let your spirits be open. For those coming here for the first time, this is Koinonia. And we're on a series, Thrive Part 2. T-H-R-I-V-E. This is Part 2. The series is an attempt to concretize upon our hearts some of the keys that are required for transgenerational relevance. Some of the keys that are required for rising above the vicissitudes of life. Like I said last week, um, it will be irresponsible to pretend that the economic turmoil, the hardship and all of the things that people are going through it's not telling on people you cannot imagine the stories that have emerged as a result of people's frustration whenever a people are limited in any way it will only take time they will react and oftentimes they will react based on the informations that they have so they will use violence they would um, do a lot of very stupid things i've heard of people walking naked for money i've heard of people giving their children for all kinds of immoral things for money i've heard of people doing all sorts of things and and the truth about it is that except you are shielded with revelation um you will really feel the gravity of what is happening institutions are lamenting churches are lamenting social organizations businesses lamenting the government itself is lamenting and that means that we have to source for light and life from another dimension, another 
reality that is beyond the scope of the human experience amen and i started sharing with us last week how that it is possible to rise above these things i love the song that the worship team communicated there is victory listen listen there is no experience of anyone regardless of what the peculiar experience is that is worthy enough to disprove the power the integrity the glory and the efficacy of the person and the word of god are we together if i die today of sickness my dying of sickness will raise a lot of questions among those who love me those connected to this vision and several people across the world but it does not change the fact that god is mighty and it is within his power to heal are we together if you really want to receive from god you must desist from isolating your singular experience and using it as a template to judge everything the bible says about god because our experiences are limited the bible says that we see in part first corinthians 13 we see in part therefore we prophesy our communications and that which we do is according to our perspectives this is why i i seek him as a matter of life and death let it not be that i'm holding on to a perspective that after many years of being convicted by it and leading others to be convicted by it i discover that i have lived in error and have communicated the same to people the bible says that we be careful so that what we call light be not darkness after many years of a man's life you can discover that the very foundation upon which your convictions are built upon is wrong inaccurate imbalanced are we together so when we come before his presence our hearts must be opened you don't come to god with an opinion hoping that he agrees with you when you come to him your heart is absolutely open you say lord i am aware of my vulnerability i'm a product of culture i'm a product of genetic programming i'm a product of environmental conditioning and many of the realities that i've held as true though popular though spiritual may not be consistent with your path so i come to you with every open-heartedness trusting that you will build you will tear down you will rearrange and bring order to my life and that's what god is doing in the name of jesus every time you see consistent results in the life of a man in the life of a people in the life of a territory it is because there is something that is done correctly whether or not the practitioners are aware of the dynamics of what they are doing are we together whether or not the individuals can explain in detail what they are doing or not the moment you see consistent results regardless of limitations there are laws there are principles that are being practiced are we together and uh, i'm going to take it from there i shared with us a few things four points in all we took two i would begin to take from um, where we left off last week and then we'll continue number one i told us that the key to rising above the vicissitudes of life rising above the challenges and the things that hold men crippled spiritually economically and so on and so forth the first key is a genuine encounter with jesus christ the first key to becoming relevant is not being educated the first key to becoming relevant is not having business acumen it's not even being a leader are we together it's not it's not any of these things success and any kind of impact a life of notable impact starts from the health and the quality of a man's spiritual life say amen the measure of your impact through god in the kingdom is directly associated with the genuineness of your hunger the sincerity of your love for god while we're away on a ministration in the course of the week i met a man of god who was at the meeting and he just came to see me and talk to me and um you know god did great things and honored himself in the meeting and the man sat down and he began to weep like a baby 
and he said sir what is the secret i don't know how many times people have asked this what is the secret and i kept looking at him and i said sir i can bet that you might be disappointed if i tell you i wish the secret were just fasting and prayer i wish the secret were just the quality of my word study life i wish the secret were just that i was anointed as important as those things are i told him if you want me to be sincere with you and you have the heart to receive the secret to the dimensions that by the grace of god i've been able to access are we together is tied primarily to my passion for god and my sincere desire to see him glorified my passion for god and my sincere desire to see him glorified you've heard me say it and god knows my heart i love god more than ministry i love god more than money i love god more than anointing i don't use him for these things never have and never will i rather give up ministry a thousand times to remain in his presence and to remain in love with him i even love him more than the quest for his presence this is where i believe many people miss it because primarily our motives are corrupted god for us means many things for other people he's just a solution like a charm like a genie that you use and invoke his name invoke his blood invoke his fire invoke whatever to get results you're not going to really host extraordinary results that way are we together a genuine encounter with jesus that births the fear of god in you that births love for god and love for humanity it's not enough to love god you must love the people he has sent to you and you must love the body i love the body of christ with all my heart i am part of it i'm proud to be part of it i love the body of christ i may not agree with every perspective in the body of christ i may not hold as part of my conviction every opinion and perspective but it's, it's too little a reason to not love the body of christ i love the body of christ regardless of man of god regardless of denomination regardless of exploits or setbacks i genuinely love the body of christ now let me tell you when you get to this spiritual state when you can assume this posture you are ready to host the grace for transgenerational relevance not outside of this condition the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it come into the heart of any man that which god has in store not for them that pray not for them that seek him for them that love him when a man truly falls in love with god and is addicted with his presence his life everything about god becomes an obsession to you his house his life his word everything your whole life is poured as a drink offering then you are ready to rise above any challenge i'm telling you challenges will come upon you you will rise and shake them off as if they do not exist believe me i know what i'm saying are we together so we discussed that and i said how that many believers they may be born again but they've not had a genuine encounter with jesus an encounter that is greater than any circumstance you know when people doubt god and turn and insult god to his face over situations and circumstances lord i prayed for for tea you didn't give me tea i prayed for bread you didn't give me bread i prayed for cgpa i prayed for a job you are not faithful and um, you know god if you don't do this i will backslide it's because you've not had an encounter the remedy for that kind of talk is just an encounter it's not counseling the remedy is an encounter there is a way that a man encounters god that you owe him your allegiance regardless of what happens around your life are we together it's very important whether you bless me or not i'm in love with you to a point of addiction whether ministry rises or not it has no it it, it it does not contribute in any way to influencing my love and my appetite for you 
please i pray that as you listen to me this will become a reality that this will not just become a talk from a preacher you see when you are pretending certain things in the kingdom it will only take time time does not change anything but time is a revealer of motives time will reveal whether you genuinely love god or not the second thing we said that is the key and i'll pick up from here now that's where we left up last week is the power of mental transformation the second key that is required to rise above and beyond the challenges in life listen please to rise above the limitations that plague mankind to rise to a life that is of notable transgenerational relevance a degree of kingdom impact that outlives you if christ tarries the power of mental transformation listen i said it it never it never tires me to communicate to god's people the extent to which the quality of their paradigm can determine the course of their future in ministry in life in business in marriage in any area at all the quality of your mindset are we together and i told us last week that we are conditioned in two ways basically the first condition is a genetic programming we are programmed genetically by reason of the transfer of traits i'm being very slow and being very detailed because i want us to get this the second which is the most disastrous or most um, notable of the transformations is environmental programming say environmental programming we are programmed environmentally which can be engineered by culture past experiences our levels of exposure the environment that we grew up in chances are that if you never saw a successful person growing up you do not have a reference you see belief is based on a reference are we together you cannot believe vaguely there must be a reference preferably a physical living reference that becomes a standard and the platform upon which your convictions are built this is why the disciples were very powerful jesus was a reference and that's why every leader that must teach people part of the assignment of every leader is not only to communicate his persuasions but to be a reference of the same it is easy for people to believe when there is a measure when a when a leader is in different ways reference worthy it becomes easy for individuals to connect when a man is teaching about the anointing and there is some degree of the demonstration of the power and the grace of god upon his life it becomes easy for the listeners to be persuaded by that dimension are we together it is very difficult listen it is very difficult to persuade people over a reality that your life cannot be a reference of no matter how little the reference is that it is worthy of conviction the same thing i am teaching now i am going to be teaching it 10 15 years to come but it will be more impactful than it is now because by that time my life will be a higher reference than it is now the same way some of the things i'm sharing now were the things that i shared a number of years past but their impact um were not as impactful as it is now of course i've grown in the anointing but also there have been maybe a few evidences here and there that can back up and support that communication communication at communicating a dimension of spiritual reality or a dimension of any reality that does not have your life as a commendable reference is very frustrating this already is a lesson for someone that if you want to change your world the first key is to change yourself that you become a template enough people are not that hardened people are only obsessed with results it is god that sees the heart men look at the outward appearance they want to see that if you are teaching on divine health there is a measure of that reality at work in you if you are teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity there is a measure of that reality if you are teaching on leadership or excellence or dimensions of kingdom reality 
there is a level of persuasion that stems from your own experience are we blessed tonight the power of mental transformation the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 9 it says receiving the end of your faith we discussed that last week it said even the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul bringing your soul through the renewal of your mind to a point where it can host the realities that are resident within your spirit i began to discuss with us and we've done this over different series as we've discussed through the years the power of paradigms look at me listen let me tell you something as great as a man is he can limit god remember our scripture that has become an anthem in this place psalm 78 verse 41 they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they said can god make a table in the wilderness they limited the holy one it was not their fault it was their conditioning after 430 years of servitude with no hope of deliverance it was understandable that such a people as a corporate entity can doubt god something about our culture as good as it is something about our cultural experiences have informed us has created an understanding in our minds i was talking to a, a dear friend today who came over to see me and uh, we were discussing certain things he was along the side of um, the line of marriage and all of that and i was sharing with him uh, you know generally speaking you know we we got into different discussions and i was telling him that if i were to cop to counsel an intending couple i'm not going to waste time asking a lot of useless and vague questions the first thing i want to examine is their passion for god and then the next thing i want to examine the extent of their compatibility in terms of their understanding what is your viewpoint about god what is your viewpoint about money what is your viewpoint about your assignment and purpose what is your viewpoint about your personal life what is your viewpoint about external influences in your life and hope this does not just apply to the line of marriage it applies to everything there is something culture taught us about god there is something our well-meaning pastors and preachers told us about god their experiences were their sermons they preached it with confidence we embraced it with sincerity and we are victims of their limitations are we together there's something that our past experiences have done i always give an example if it took someone 10 years to get admission and you teach on favor it will take an extra anointing for that person to understand that message are we together because there is no template that represents favor in his life most of our families live from hand to mouth so every time we talk about prosperity our minds go straight to the people they insulted and the way they insulted them we have associated prosperity with negativism with fraud with with unseriousness with fetish demonic activities especially when young people are prosperous and you know let me tell you something after listening to a very powerful message after listening to a powerful series financial dominion the wealthy place the economic system of the kingdom you will think that your paradigm will change at once no it took a long time for it to be built it will take a repetition repetition of new ideas are the keys to changing our paradigms you have to you have to bring forth those new ideas again and again that's why the bible says faith comment by hearing and hearing the next word hearing there is understanding hearing and understanding what you hear by the word of god hallelujah proverbs tells us for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart it didn't say so he will become it didn't say so he is becoming for as he thinketh in his heart so is he for as he thinketh in his heart it equates my physical reality to my life this is the difference hear me brothers and sisters between a ceo who is living in an office with an ac having secretaries and pas and sitting down and you think he's just writing and then a megad a, 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 a security person who is opening and closing gates in anger and frustration 
most times the security person is angry how can i be working so hard and i'm receiving ten thousand per month and someone is there just writing and he's receiving five hundred thousand and my answer to that frustration is what switch them switch them for only two weeks take the megad don't change anything don't give him any orientation keep him in that office and take the ceo to the gate let me tell you what will happen after two weeks people will stop going to the office the ceo will do something to that gate that will make the customers remain there are we together his hospitality his open-heartedness his calmness his people skills and all of these other factors that are important for success will compel the people to love him and remain there let's go to our man in the office i know what he will be doing drinking all the juice in the fridge as fast as he can because something about his mind tells him you are you are certainly not going to be here for a long time then he looks for what to steal he signs documents anyhow and then he crosses his leg watching tv changing channels enjoying the ac probably texting all the people and say my life has changed the place will be dirty i assure you he will not empty the waste bin he doesn't have that frame of excellence his paradigm of excellence is not that way he will destroy everything he will misplace documents scatter them and wonder why they are arranged accurately at the end of it he will be frustrated he will steal something sizable and run away that will be the end of that man another popular example you wore a shirt for one year it was always clean and iron nobody knew it was one years old and you gave somebody and his mindset rubbed off on the shirt in one month he turned a white shirt to brown have you seen people like that yeah listen our physical environment is but a looking glass you never change your physical reality by arguing and trying to change things it's not even by trying to dress well and no 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 it's a culture you've got to change your mind so the bible says in philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus i was not born this way i re-engineered myself using the word of god and following those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise are we together you must be disloyal to any understanding and paradigm that has given demon spirits access points to destroy your life hallelujah paradigms there are people who will use a water system toilet a very clean toilet and finish i mean in a house not even the one in the hostels a clean toilet they enter the bathroom they saw everything clean they use it and leave it there and just go out smiling and they tell you are finished they took their mindsets there their mindsets took them there are we together yeah there is something about excellence as obvious as it should be you must be trained to discern it don't ever assume that because your mindset has changed it is so that's the reason why the higher you rise the more you must have a greater capacity for patience because when your mindset changes you wonder sometimes i look at people and i am amazed the way they think certain things that should be so obvious you are wondering how their mindset can veer off and give them such suggestions the power of paradigms are we together A man can come to you someone can come to a Jimmy for instance and sit down and look at him and look at his house and see how God has blessed him and then just look at him and say sir don't be offended anything for the boys and you are wondering you have access to a great man what is there to say sir if you were to be at my age what will you advise me to do or if you will be at my level in life what two things do you think I should focus on now we never ask questions. Have you seen people who have access to great men? One guy came to my hotel room in Abuja and he came just because of his friend. He wouldn't even come. 
he came there because of some well, a senior, someone like a mentor to him who is my friend. They came to greet me. When they said hello, we're discussing, I served them myself. I'm telling you, before anybody picked the thing, the guy carried the, the something and opened it and was taking it. Whereas the person, his mentor now kept quiet and was listening. You see why that guy is his mentor? Are we together? There is a logic to people's frustration. You can trace it and see why they are where they are. Paradigms. Mindsets. Why should I dress well? Um, do, am I rich? Paradigm. Are we together? There are people praying endlessly to have pot belly. Just like that. Why? Because based on certain cultural experiences. Now listen, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm teaching here. There are cultures, am I right? That train people. The moment they see you with some level of weight, they say, ah, this is, things are working. But you know that absolutely nothing is working. Paradigms. That's what informs people to live fake lives. There are people who, if God blesses with 50,000 now, their mindset tells them, look, you need to do something around you to make people believe you belong. So they run away and blow up everything and they come to people and you see sometimes, let me tell you something. When I meet people who are greater than me, I have no pressure to prove any point because I know I'm stupid when I'm doing it. But then you see a lot of people with their little understanding, small results here and there, they come and they never learn. They are trying to impress you. Ejimi, I'm a business person. I just read Robert Kiyosaki's book and you are watching his ignorance. That act alone is a revelation of where you are. Because great people are silent. Let her works speak for her at the gates. And so when we we're done, let me finish up my story. They were about to go. I was greeting them, you know. And then the gentleman just came to me and said, Sir, please, just one favor. I said, what is it? He said, let me snap with you. And I looked at him. I said, this, this boy is not wise. Honestly speaking. That's why we must crave for wisdom. I said, this, this guy is not smart one bit. I said, all right, that's okay. He snapped with me. About three hours later, my friend called me and said the guy posted a picture on Facebook that me and my very good friend, Apostle Joshua Selman. Now, hold on. I'm not insulting him. He may even be listening now. Listen. Listen. Do you know that gentleman thinks is by snapping with me so that every other person around Look, let me tell you. If a billionaire wears slippers and kaftan and you wear suit and stand close to him, something about you will tell you you are not yet ready for this place. If Benny Hinn stands today and I side, side by side with him and they say colleagues in ministry, even me I know. God knows. The devil knows that we are not colleagues. They will snap me standing when you watch the picture it, I will be kneeling down. Because the reality of my heart will reflect itself. Amen. Say paradigms. Say mindsets. Say programmings. Something that your parents held was responsible for their limitations. Culture. Experiences. Are we together? I don't want to be ahead of myself because the third thing I'll be talking about is where we'll dwell today in details. And um, I trust that God will change our mindsets. Now, let me tell you something. There is nothing God can do about your life, as powerful as he is, if you are not willing to change your mindset. Lord, I want you, I want you to bless me. And God says, okay, can you allow me to work on you? There's nothing wrong with me. God says, all right. Here you have it. That's good. There is a mindset that is responsible for poverty. There is a mindset that has, keep, has kept many men of God limited in life and ministry. There are certain mindsets that have, have kept corporate organizations small. Sometimes I wish that I knew the things I've learned in the last two, three years. Maybe that I knew them 10, 20 years ago. I would have been 100 times without exaggerating higher than I am now. I pray that you will receive these things and you will believe them. In one minute, lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, there is something in my mind that is responsible 
for my limitations. Please take it out of me. Go ahead and pray. Take it out of me. Take it out of me. There's something. I grew up in Nigeria and there is a way Nigerians are lovely people. They are great people. But there is a faulty paradigm. Take it away from my life. Take it away from my life. I declare my disloyalty to every paradigm. No matter how long I have held it. A paradigm that has stopped me from accessing the anointing. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a leader. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a visionary person. A paradigm that has stopped me from being wealthy. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Alright, so let's take today's own. The third key. Key number three. To rising above recession. Key number three. To rising above any kind of limitation. Is the discovery and the development of your value and your abilities. I'm going to dwell here. There is a lot to talk about here. The discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. I've done a lot of teachings and I have taught again and again how that a man's relevance, please listen to me, a man's relevance is not based on chance. It's not based on some kind of sentiments. The disparity, the, the stratification between the wealthy, between the great, the anointed, the influential, among many other reasons, primarily is their value. Write this down, please. Your value is a representation of your worth. Your value is a representation of your worth. W-O-R-D. Your value is a representation of your worth. Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. Your value is a representation of your worth. Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. This is the index for measuring a man's value. So when we say a person is valuable, a preacher is valuable, a businessman is valuable, a leader is valuable, please listen to me. We're not necessarily just talking about um, anything vague or anything fetish. A measure of the perception that people have over you on the strength of the solutions that you provide on the strength of the problems that you solve and on the strength of the lives and destinies that you transform put it in another way if you are not providing any kind of solution if you are not solving any kind of problem and if you are not contributing to the transformation of the lives and destinies of people you are not valuable and hear me please relevance and wealth in the kingdom is built on a reward system we've said it again and again let me just do a recap on it or touch a bit into that right you can get the message the wealthy place write this down this is the fundamental law that governs wealth and abundance and governs greatness in the kingdom our rewards in life and that reward can be financial the sense of security the sense of honor that we receive whatever it is our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what we do number one the demand or the need for what we do number two our ability to do what we do number three the difficulty in replacing us my relevance in life my relevance as a man of God 
it's not just tied to God the demand for what I do my ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me let me tell you when you understand this you can accurately gauge why you are where you are right now this is why pastors are wealthy listen pastors think they are wealthy I was teaching the school of ministry uh, school of ministry students and I said many men of God think they are rich because they are serving God that's not the reason why people are wealthy it's based on a law if I am blessed today among other reasons is based on the perception that you and other people around this nation and in certain parts of the world have about me which is on the strength of what I do my proficiency in doing it are we together a man of God is not rich because he prayed for the sick a man of God is rich because he's providing solutions his solution may be supernatural in origin the solution may be spiritual when you connect people to Jesus Christ you are providing an eternal solution to the predicament of men and the system of God's economy was designed that every time you dispense value whether given for free or sold a reward must come to you a reward must come to you the laws are inflexible you cannot change them so for as long as there is an anointing upon me to bring people to the place of encounter for as long as there is an anointing upon me to birth transformation of the minds and destinies for as long as there is an anointing to birth revival to bring miracles signs and wonders I remain valuable as far as God is concerned and the benefactors let me tell you why that is powerful much more than business it is an intrinsic value value that is not dependent on any external environment and value that is rewarded only based on the perception of the benefactors so one person can bless me with 100 naira as a representation of his comprehension of my value another person can bless me with 10 million as his comprehension of the perception of my value don't say i am poor don't say i am mediocre what value are you bringing to the table of destiny call this stage the table of greatness there are enough seats for everyone but your past is your value your past is your value not just any value values that are needed and useful values that are needed and useful applicable to the predicament of your generation God is helping someone. Are we together? What have you brought to the table of greatness? That author, you, you know, listen, listen. Do you know why they call people thieves and frown? Because you see rewards, but you do not see the value that is commensurate to that reward. That's why we hate armed robbers. An armed robber brings a gun and says give me your one million and you tell him what is the value he said i have no value but i have a gun to threaten you so it is bad but that same one million you will give it to someone who offers a value that is worth it listen you don't sit down and wish to rise you grow in value to the level that matches what you desire so Frank Edward ministers and based on the perception of his value someone can bless him with 10 million whereas there is another musician somewhere in Samaru who may be moving around and nobody will bless him what is the difference their value your value is a representation of your worth based on your ability There are two dimensions to value. I want to talk a bit about value. Number one is intrinsic value. Write it down. Intrinsic or inherent value. Value that came with you. It was a gift from God to you. Part of your packaging and part of your wiring. It can be improved upon.
Hallelujah. Are we blessed this night? I really want to challenge you. Look at me, please. Please do not trivialize what I'm teaching you. God is not a herbalist. This is the key that lifts men above recession. I was talking to one of our ladies. She works in the bank. And um, I was talking to her this morning. And I told her, I said, how is it going in the bank? And she said, Kai, things are, are really bad for many people. Oh. But she said, there are some. I said, that's right. In my mind, I said, that's me. You are now talking about me. He said, there are some, their lives have increased and multiplied. Do you know the concept of recession is not supposed to apply to an individual? Recession only makes sense when you look at it from a corporate and a territorial perspective. There was famine in Samaria minus the king. Minus the king. Number two, minus Elijah. All the people, Elijah never said, please, even Elijah begged for bread. Elijah did not beg for bread in Samaria. He came gallantly and saw people eating their children. The other one said, we ate my child yesterday. We said, let's boil this other child and the woman refused. Are we together? Prophet, we boiled my child yesterday. When I was eating my child, we ate together. Now is the turn to eat her own child and they refused. And the prophet said, no. Let me tell you something. Your value vetoes your education. Your value vetoes your cultural background. Your value vetoes any limitation. I don't care what it is. Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Listen. Believe me, brothers and sisters, when I tell you your value vetoes a lot of things. Sunday Adelaja, 96% of his membership in a communist nation, right? Ukraine, a communist nation, 96% of his members are white. In a communist nation. Value. The key to eradicating a sense of unworthiness is not criticizing great people. This is what a lot of pastors go through. This is what a lot of business people go through. This is what a lot of individuals go through. They think the key is resentment and anger and hatred. No. The key is to pay the price of discovery. And developing your value. A student comes in. Backtrack five years. Six years. A naive young person. Probably in his teenage. Comes into an institution. I want to study medicine. Not even having an idea of what he wants to do. Are we together? Or the implication. And he goes through. Five, six. Probably seven years. Of rigorous training. They never change his skin. They never change his clothes. They only change his mind. And after six, seven years, a panel of people will test him and accredit the fact that he is worthy of being called a doctor. And they issue a little piece of paper that becomes his authorization. Value. I'm surprised when many people say why am I poor what kind of question is that why am I poor why am I suffering the recession and I, I mean no disrespect as I communicate this everyone is left to his lot if Bill Gates for instance let me use finances if Bill Gates comes here right now and says everybody Go and hold someone whose life you changed. If you can hold five people, you receive a million dollars. Some of us who roam to everybody, you touch somebody, you say, I will slap you. You've not added any value to my life. Why, why do you want to hold me? I have never been blessed, not by your wisdom, not by your spiritual life, not by your anointing, not by your academics. Nothing about you has changed me. But there are others, there will not be enough room. Everybody says he changed me.
you changed me you blessed me you advised me my business is flourishing because of the idea you gave me that sickness in my body left because of the anointing upon your life the power of your secret place changed my life you preached a message and brought a dimension that changed me problem solved solutions provided lives transformed and there is a reward waiting for you i guarantee you no witch and no wizard from any village and anywhere has the power and the capacity to stand an individual that has worked upon his value what is my value what is my gift what is that ability that can bail me out let me tell you something and I'm, I'm a Nigerian I want to say something that is very serious right now I'm a Nigerian I love Nigeria I love everyone in this country we are brothers and sisters are we together but listen do you know why I want to be sincere with you do you know why a lot of people are suffering this recession now I know many people think he's Buhari others think he's Jonathan other people think he's PDP APC I'm not a politician are you together let me tell you something about the nose diving of the oil revealed that we have never truly been valuable as a people we only receive natural resources and we have been covering it for years the same way to happen to your destiny i mean a, a department they give everybody food free of charge so i think let me tell you you do not generalize impact and success you must be sure what part you are contributing otherwise you'll be ashamed with time we are worship team we are all great but in all sincerity what is your unique contribution one day you hold the mic alone and on that day we know that you are the one limiting the worship team on that day we know ah so that mistake in the keyboard comes from you we have been managing it but right now we are a group of intelligent lecturers we are all intelligent people the day you have to do a presentation as a person life must single you out one day to defend yourself i belong to an anointed ministry great and wonderful we are shaking the world i agree with you a day will come you will stand before the sick apostle i'm not there hey Jimmy, i'm not there my head of department prayer ushering, oh, decoration they are all not there on that day that's when you will know whether the impartations you've been receiving or otherwise life will challenge you life will test it and until you are able to prove it the disciples kept enjoying corporate success until one day when jesus climbed up the mount of transfiguration they were happy they brought an epileptic person they said don't worry about jesus we are here just keep him down they struggled they were embarrassed nothing happened let me tell you do you know what causes jealousy the ease and the flawlessness that someone who has paid the price to be valuable does on something you have been frustrated about you've been praying on a sick body and you gave all kinds of reasons no this person cannot be sick then the person comes for a meeting and even without being prayed for before the opening prayer he's healed and then the person testifies exactly as it happened you know how people testify they will say it the way it happened may god make you to be to develop an appetite to be valuable an appetite to be valuable let me tell you how you know you are really valuable when no monetary value placed on you becomes a burden to the giver you are exceptionally valuable listen listen I can't remember how much this is how much they bought it but let's assume this is 300,000 just an assumption right assume that this pulpit is 300,000 when they call the price what do you do you look at it the material the quality and he says okay if they look at this and say bring 10 million you look at it and say no that's the same way they rate you so you say 20,000 they say you are telling the truth then you say 100,000 they say for where is money free like that but there are others they don't even say anything their value says any amount priceless 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 
priceless. And so someone brings 10 million and says, sir, please don't be offended. It's a privilege for me to do this. May you be such a person. May you be such a person. Hallelujah. Benihin is coming to Nigeria and the plans that have in fact to a point that the very ministry that is bringing him does not even have absolute control over his coming again. The Christian bodies have had to come in because they sat and said no, 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 no. We are going to come in. Now he's not only ministering in Lagos, he's also going to worry to go and minister in a crusade. Again. Say value. When Benihin enters a, a nation, no matter who is invited, uh, inviting him, he is received by the ambassador of the America and a presidential delegation. So his coming is not something you wake up and come by mistake. Even if he's strolling, his personality, we call it human capital. My, my desire is that under God, myself and this great ministry will be so valuable. This place has become like a place of pilgrimage right now. The protocol has had to start making arrangements with hotels around. Why? Because every week, groups are coming, individuals are coming from all over the nation. It's called value. If we remain at this level, we will never rise. But if we keep rising by the Spirit of God and through determination, a time will come, somebody will come from another state, another nation and say it's a privilege, finally. Are you that valuable? Are you that valuable that your absence is an interruption to somebody's life? Are you so valuable? I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart. Then you will know why certain... The money we are saying has left Nigeria did not disappear. Money is like energy. It can neither be created nor destroyed. It is transferred. So it leaves from the point of no value, passes through the place of small value and lands in the place of capital value. Say amen. Wanting something for nothing is fraud. Wanting something for nothing is wickedness. Now let me tell you how many of us approach it. Oh God, will you keep looking at me like this? And God says, I've been looking. I set laws and I put preachers. He said, let them come back to, to life. Remember the prayer of, of, of who? The rich man. Let them come back to life. He said, no, they have the prophets and the law. If they will not listen to them, even if somebody comes back to the dead, they will not listen. Just like there are people God has anointed, but many people will not listen. Why should you fail in life? Your background? Who told you it's because of your background? There are people today with no arms, but they are valuable. There are people with no legs, they are valuable. There are people with no eyes, they are valuable. There are people who cannot speak, they are valuable. We don't love Jesus just because he's the son of God. He's really valuable. It's an expression of infinite value by every standard. Are we together? Any man can determine his lot in life. Any man can determine his lot in life. Your reward is in exact proportion. But apostle, I'm a graduate and now I'm working. I'm getting 50,000. But now I'm married to a wife and three children. That's the limit of your value. Because your education was never designed to fund your assignment. It was designed to help you. You are only working at the limit of what you know. And if you do not know more, you will remain that way. Hallelujah. Yesterday, um, one of the protocol, he, he usually helps me. If, there's, if they need to fix anything in my car, he helps me to fix it. And um, I was going to drop him and I decided to just take a stroll with him. I like talking to people. I decided to take a stroll with him and then to turn and come back. And I was talking to him. I said, do you know why you are in this car now? And he looked at me. I said, there are so many people in Zaria 
you can drive and you have loyalty and integrity it's called value it end you the right here when we stop let me confess we went to buy suya praise god <laughs> and so while they were ordering the suya i made an order of the suya and he was sitting i said do you know why you are sitting close to me now he said no sir i said value you are the one who went to fix the car it gave you the privilege to do it i told him do you know why we are not in a filling station now he said no he said because the tank is full the day it finishes or gets more we will need the filling station are we together why have i not come to you why have i not called you you don't call me why should i why should i you are proving as if i'm nothing you made yourself so there is a way you make yourself there are people who cannot even pick calls there are others who are angry aaron i don't like what you are doing Haba, is it because god has lifted you now you left us that's always what they say i intend to rise whoever intends to rise with me then we move together i cannot love you so much to be so loyal and keep myself low i'm telling you why many of us are offended with so many people offended my friend we used to eat together but you were not doing the same thing now the person has risen you call the person and a secretary picks hello sir so so and so so organization please let me talk to him jare tell him my name is uh, ajayi you don't know me again and you are shouting and raking and getting angry may god make you so valuable listen to me listen to me may god make you so valuable that your value transcends territories because there are values that are only there are people that's what we call local champion one who is valuable within a territory and so when you step out to another territory you are as inert as somebody whose potentials is not at work but there are certain people even celebrity musicians even if they step out by mistake everybody is snapping them they have to run now they may be going to hell are we together but as far as value is concerned generally speaking they are communicating value it's just the content of their music that is demonic their vocal training is excellent to a fault now you come on stage and you say i want to rise what are you called into i'm called into the music ministry really yes what have you done so far i've been you know a gentleman came and met me one time and he came and he said that he's looking for sponsors i said what for that that he wants to produce an album i said who is mentoring you he said nobody i said who have can you play any instrument he said no i said who has ever approved genuinely approved of your music he said no i said i'm not going to help you and and i'm 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 really helping you by not helping you because i'm i'm helping you realize the mistake fast Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Listen. Can't you see that this is God's bailout system? I came from a background where we were living in a hut with mud. The, the mud is not in your mind. The mud is not in your mind. Jesus was born in Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He broke that limit. Stop giving excuses. Make up your mind from today. There is something my world can celebrate. Years ago, when I was staying in a little room, praying and reading books, all my money went to buying books. buy the truth and sell it not god you have given me grace for music and worship who can invite me because of the grace i carry don't flatter yourself in mediocrity challenge yourself based on a reference that is global don't flatter yourself you make mistakes you sing off key and someone says kai you know elijah this is fantastic you say really no you didn't do well you didn't do well we were glorified because of the anointing but vocally speaking you didn't do well this 
lack of preparedness is what makes people to mock themselves any competition they hear around they will come have you seen people like that and they say why are you here they say i'm here to win and you watch the your competitors just by looking at them you see the flawlessness of their preparation and just the preliminary screening you are back home and then he said, no, in Nigeria, this is because this person is Yoruba. That's why they didn't take me. No, sir, you are not good. Be honest with yourself. It's, I'm not saying you cannot be good. Listen, value is only valuable when competence is added to it. Value only becomes valuable when competence is added to it. Yesterday, I was studying on diamonds. I just decided to study on diamonds. I didn't know that there were different kinds of diamonds different kinds and i was seeing the diamonds and the the rigor in finding them and i mean their structure the the precision of their structure is what makes them valuable are you competent are you competent seest thou a man Diligent in his ministry, diligent in his business, it's only a matter of time. You may be soaking Gary now, but diligence is like a plane, it will lift you beyond the limitations. It can be raining, and you just take a flight, and within one minute, you are already out of that rain. You are not even aware that it's raining again until you land. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. I will be a wicked preacher i will be a wicked man of god to not challenge you in the area of value because that's what i'm doing with my life and by the grace of god and in all sincerity that's what has brought me where i am and i told you where i am now is my preparation of yesterday tomorrow will reveal to you what i'm doing today value always precedes manifestation so when you see a man manifest that's not his true state it is his passive state based on your seeing him now in business in ministry there are many pastors who don't know how this thing works and they may never find out there are many people who don't know how this thing works i'm sorry to say but look at zaria as a case study almost every business in zaria almost not all but almost every business in Zaria is tainted by mediocrity, smallness, average. There's, there's nothing world class. There's, there's no touch of excellence in it. We are limited because of our culture. I have my small shop. This is nice. We never learn. Someone has paid the price and made the mistake for you. Then you make it again. No, you must learn from other people's mistakes. Are we together i have hardly seen things in this city and i say it with all humility that have impressed me to know that this is at a level of a global repute from our hotels are we together to our restaurant services in fact from the most part they are terrible yet there are many of us seated here if i ask you now what did you say i've been cooking you are the only one who has not eaten the fact that I've not eaten your food means nobody has recommended it. And that means they've been flattering you by saying it's sweet. If food is delicious, we are not stupid people. It means wife makes cakes. Everybody knows. She's not necessarily done any great marketing. Let her works speak for her at the gates. What is so exceptional about what you do? What do you do that will make me feel like I am losing a lot if I don't partner with you? Everybody say competence. Say it, competence. Say it again, competence. Listen, if you pay attention to what I'm saying, you will reap an endless, you will reap an endless benefit. Favor then is when preparedness. The day God wants to bless you, he will station your destiny helpers close to you. Men and women who have the perception and the strength to reward your value. And then he says, now, 
you have prepared yourself there are too many you know the problem with many of us look at me this 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 pressure for recognition I want to know that I may see you I said it I think it was to the school of ministry students people write books after 10 20 years of a track record but in Nigeria people write books to start up what they are doing so someone who has nothing writes 81 keys to the billionaire lifestyle a book is an authorization for men to listen to you based on a result that is obvious in your life you are documenting your persuasion to create a track for people to follow years ago a few well they are not really my friends but they are ministers too they met me and said apostle at your level there are some bishops who are not like you you should be on tv and radio i said i hear so that i will get to a point where i'm limited and i have to beg for partners isaiah 77 give me isaiah 61 give me 61 naira or 610 naira i don't want to do all those things I don't want to stand on air playing gimmicks. I want a situation where the day Koinonia comes on air, someone will say, this is what I've been looking for. I have, I have one, I mean, I have a business that is producing $10 million every month. I've been looking for a ministry to sponsor. This is it. Solutions provided. Problems solved. Lives transformed. And you enter your Sabbath at once. Please hear me, Koinonia, and all those following. Not everybody is a victim of this recession. I tell you the sincere truth from the depth of my heart. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. The finance of this ministry has skyrocketed in a way and a dimension that is irrecoverable this year more than any year put together now please I'm sorry if it looks like I'm boasting I'm only challenging you in the time we call recession say something I do not know say it again something I do not know may be responsible for my limitation one of my pastor friends started bus transport, bus services, and he called me. He said, Apostle, I can't believe this. You've been transporting people on bus services and we're not so much in our church. Just at one junction where everybody will wait. After one month, we looked at when they sent the report, I said, nobody a trek from wherever you are coming. And we've done this without fail. Not for Friday's program. Any time this ministry is holding any program, once it is night, we're a responsible ministry. At any time, whether it was planned or not. Brothers and sisters, there is something that is being done. This is where I'm taking you to. It was not like that. Our first crusade, they were almost locking me because of 150,000. Aaron, whereas the money that is circulating now was still there. I have learned through pain. I have learned through mistakes. I've learned through mentorship and you are receiving it for free. I pray that you will treasure it and I pray that it will lift you higher than ever. Some of you are about to get married. You know you are not ready. Are we together? You already know, not by revelation, by wisdom that your wife is going to suffer. You know that your children are going to suffer. How do I know that there is no plan? Dotham was became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. You are not preparing your way. There can't be greatness. Don't be too quick to show forth. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Prophesy to yourself. Say myself. Prepare. Myself. Be competent. Myself. Work on yourself. Don't make noise. Don't take this colleague mentality moving around. I used to know you, Pastor Femi. We are fellow pastors. 
colleague mentality is the key to the undoing of many people oh we were classmates the same class the same university the same this the, we are both doctors we are both professors no 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 the bible says one star different from another in glory say in the name of jesus there is a, an ability say there is a gift within me that is greater than zaria greater than nigeria there is an intrinsic value within me that can bless me that can bless the kingdom and i will search it out hallelujah there is an intrinsic value now intrinsic value has to do with value that is inherent the only thing you do is to develop it is there i'll give you an example intellectual property is an intrinsic value you don't refrigerate it you don't warm it you don't keep it in a safe in a bank is there is there you've trained your mind intelligence intellectual property is there he's playing this keyboard now this is intrinsic value is value within him value that does not depend on the external environment for its performance are we together now yeah a photocopy machine is not an intrinsic value the machine needs a demand the machine needs a lot of things. The machine needs light. Are we together? The greatest way to rise is to walk first on your intrinsic value. You have the grace to sing. Walk on it. You are an entrepreneur. Walk on it. Don't say I'm a CEO. CEO that is not producing results is a sign to sit down. Say I'm a potential CEO. There are people moving all around with complimentary cards and flattering themselves i am this and that and that i'm into real estate agro allied products and so on and so forth we have branches in in, in ghana Benin republic portacourt lagos and so on and so forth and you look at the person who is talking you ask him sir what do you know about real estate? Say, look, that's not the most important thing. Me, I'm telling you, my father did it. He gave me, and he has one plot of land somewhere. You see, we, we mock ourselves. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging without content is like a balloon. You hold a balloon and claim that the balloon is, is a metal. You will just touch it and it will burst. I sing better than many people who are called into the music ministry. Yet, they want me to buy their album. No. I told you last week, there are many people who claim they can cook. They have restaurants. Are we together? And you start bullying people and say, ah, shouldn't you come and eat in my restaurant? I saw you the other day. Ella, you should come to my restaurant to eat. Are we not fellow koinonia people? She wants to be healthy. She wants to be healthy. And as far as it is concerned, you have not worked on yourself. One of our school of ministry ladies, uh, um, she made one beautiful work, just a beautiful artwork. The students saw it. I mean, she's here. Very fantastic artwork. And when I saw it, I said, my goodness, this is excellent. I told her, improve yourself and monetize your value. Monetizing your value is the last thing you do when it is flawlessly competent. Then you place a price on it. Are we together? Now, I want everybody to write. Write three things you know God has put in you that must be developed and deployed. Please write it down. Young, old, write it down. Type it, write, do whatever it is. Please write it down. Don't flatter yourself. Don't write what you don't have. Just patiently think and you'll find your own. Don't just write because your neighbor wrote something. Value. Value. Aaron is here. He handles most of the logistics of the you know, people around. Different kinds of logistics. Why? Because he's worked on himself. And he's still working on himself. The other day I went to his house and I saw a blackboard close to his uh, just a little like 
the dining or thereabout and his little office that he has and I saw him writing goals I saw targets I saw plans of action I said this is excellent this person is going to go far please do not think discovery simply means it is worthy of reward that you have discovered a thing does not mean they will reward you it must be developed to the highest level of excellence and then communicated with integrity communicated with discipline and communicated with the anointing hallelujah I met a pastor and the pastor told me something he said man of God if you is quite an elderly man he said if you continue going the way you are going you are going to have such an exceptional ministry I said thank you sir I intend to and that's why I seek people like you to add to my life I am not ashamed of my ignorance I'm not ashamed of my limitations and the thing that I do not know there are many things I do not know I know some but there are many others if I knew them I would not be where I am and I humble myself to seek for knowledge I see the way people trivialize knowledge and trivialize the sacrifices of others are we together you call somebody you perceive to be valuable and then you tell the person when can I come and meet you or when can you come and meet me and the person says why you say I have a business proposal I want us to rob minds together sit down with your broke bad attitude and you will never rise never never rise there's so many people who do that why am I challenging you I want you to rise beyond the recession You've heard the testimonies of people. This money has not flown anywhere. This greatness has not flown anywhere. The concept of recession to an individual is a mirage. Hear me. Please hear me. I understand business. I'm not daft. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm saying. The concept of recession is not supposed to be explained from an individual platform. It is when you look at the economy territorially societally then you can say based on the gdp of a nation based on certain indices a nation when it does not meet certain things then there is a recession there is inflation or whatever it is but not an individual there has been no time in the bible where famine affected everybody there were there, there has always been exemption those who offer value are the ones who are exempted please hear me what gives you the justification that between today friday and next friday something would have entered your hand or i'm not necessarily just saying money somebody would have acknowledged the fact that god is using you to bless him my life has been transformed what value do you have you see the anointing does two things it activates something within you that was not there and amplifies something within you that is there it activates something within you that was previously not there or introduces a better word introduces something within you that was not there like the healing grace right like revelation the capacity utterance but then it also amplifies something within you that is there like creativity like leadership like your gift so number one your encounter with God that produces a fear of God in you number two a transformed mind transform beyond your cultural limitations number three the discovery and the development of your abilities your value please do not forget this greatness wealth any kind of achievement in the kingdom is based on a reward system it's not just the issue of the will of god the issue of the will of god as far as our greatness is concerned is not a mystery it is clear in the word I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord Jeremiah 29 and the 11th chapter 
thoughts of good and or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day right that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you there is always a part you have to play there is a part that i have to play huh joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law he says shall not depart from out of thy mouth he says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then he says then only then shall thou make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success success that does not steal away the time of your family success that does not steal away your life are we together give me five ten minutes let me talk a little let me take point three a little more write this down please I know that I've taught a lot about finances but let me just talk for five ten minutes on a few things about our financial life number one let me tell you something a job alone will limit you I want to I want to expand your horizon and work on your creativity a bit a job alone will limit you brothers and sisters no matter how much of a job you get no matter how great of a job you get a job does not have the capacity to fund your assignment your needs are plenty family needs the average African family has siblings that are looking up to you for assistance it's capital intensive to live in Nigeria to send children to school almost all of us here by the time you are a Christian and you are born again you have commitments to your church to your group to your ministry and part of it is financial commitment part of it there are several things you have to do that take money from you you are broke let me give us a little financial intelligence we'll always add this you are broke anytime your inflow is far far less than your outflow it, it is it is it, it you will always without fail be on deficit one naira comes into your life you need four naira to go out of your life you will be in trouble you will have to be in trouble you cannot be earning fifty thousand naira probably a hundred thousand and believe that that in itself you remove tight you remove a lot of things it is just not enough that's the challenge with our parents hundred thousand was enough when they had one child now they had they have five children but their finances have not increased so it's pinning them and straining them to death are we together what then is the solution activate other streams of income 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 don't sit down running around and say there's no job and i don't mean don't do small mediocre things that waste your time your energy your money and then at the end nothing comes out from it activate streams of income work on your mindset monetize your intrinsic value that is being developed you will rise above recession i tell you are we together did you know for instance did you know for instance every week we rent chairs in the dozens during the miracle service we rent thousands of chairs in the dozens that's someone's business are we together that's someone's business every week there are things only in this ministry alone that can make an individual a millionaire if he knows how to create a system around that value and supply it just i mean just koinonia alone 
please activate streams of income take responsibility for your life and don't give people anything substandard you are you are insincere and you are ungodly when you whet the appetite of people over a value you know you cannot offer don't be that insincere make sure that you have worked on yourself and you are competent enough then you can open up your hands for value don't collect a contract to help somebody roof his house and then you roof nonsense no don't do that if you know you cannot work on it package yourself work on yourself i work on myself every day i returned back from my trip yesterday as tired as i was i made sure that my daily goals were met please don't you think that it is just the anointing the anointing is there i'm going to talk about it paul said i thank my he says i am what i am by the grace of god he said but this grace was not showered upon me in that i labored more than ye all i prepare an average of two to three sermons every week it takes time it takes research it takes staying in the spirit there are other aspects of my life i am involved in what are you doing there is no laziness don't sit down and say oh god when will you change my my situation don't sit down and say who will come and marry me out of this problem nobody at least nobody in koinonia and brothers don't wait and say which lady bible say he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the lord Are we together this is the undoing of africa this is the undoing of many people my neighbors um they bought a few months ago they bought a grinding engine and the moment they bought that grinding engine and stationed there at once they became relevant in that environment almost all the houses within that environment no longer enter a car and go to Samaru to go and grind beans or whatever they come to them what is their reward the transportation of everybody who should go there now comes to them a place that was previously very quiet and conservative now you see the people early in the morning the engine is up and they are grinding sometimes till late in the night and they are making money from it please I want you to go back and sit down and be sincere with yourself young and old sit down and say i now see why things are not working in my life i now see why i'm feeling the heat of the recession i am not saying you should be a money monger remember we've done financial dominion so you cannot sit down and say now which business do i do uh -uh. that's a wrong question how do i develop myself to rise to a point of value when you are valuable then now you build a system around that value that's what we call business business is simply the art of packaging your value that has been developed to serve a targeted people then you receive financial rewards among other things there's nothing mysterious about business building a business is simply having a value converting it to a product or a service that is needed and useful and then creating a system that informs your potential customers of what you have to give very simple but it's not as simple as it sounds the last point rise to a point of value rise to a point of value the last point what is the fourth key to becoming transgenerationally relevant the fourth key to rising beyond recession we name the series thrive to thrive does not mean to manage the tribe to thrive means to blossom thrive gives a picture of a plant growing out you see how a plant grows out of the soil and you see it moving regardless of of the strength of the soil it shoots through it and it blossoms that's what it means to thrive you don't thrive if there are no obstacles you thrive in spite of obstacles The fourth key is an encounter with the anointing. Ah, anointing. Anointing. 
fall on me anointing fall on me let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me anointing fall sing it one more time everybody Anointing fall on me. Anointing. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. I love what I'm about to share with you, I'm telling you. Because it's something that has changed my life. You, you, see, you see the amazing dimension of God when you understand the anointing. You are amazing, Tim. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Oh, oh, oh. anointing write this down let me give you a few definitions about the anointing the down the anointing is God's seal of authorization to represent him in your territory the anointing is God's seal of authorization is his authorization upon an individual to represent him the authorization for legislature the authorization to represent God and to represent heaven on earth the anointing Number two, the anointing is the capacity to produce change and compel compliance. The capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Psalm 66 verse 3, how terrible art thou in thy ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. To compel compliance. Number three. Now I love this definition. The anointing is an empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. An empowerment to manifest, to reveal to make known the possibilities that are resident in God. There are possibilities in God. It's a slogan that we use here. Experience possibilities. I think the media should do a montage on this. Experience possibilities. It's a slogan we have come to not just recite but believe. We've indoctrinated ourselves with the fact that there, there are limitless possibilities in God. And those limitless possibilities can find expression to the degree to which the unction, the grace of God is at work upon the life of an individual. The Bible is a compendium. An unfolding of the possibilities that are resident in God. Revealed from generation to generation. Hallelujah. 
I got a testimony recently and um, I'm sure they may be following online and they, they sent it to me so I can share it in the open. When we went to Yola for the last crusade a few months, I think a month or two ago, we went to Yola. One of the person who was driving me around is a doctor, PhD, you know, with his wife. He's been married and they've, they've been, I mean, no child. This thing has not worked for them. And he decided that he was going to drive me around as a seed. You know, it's been a while they've been married. They're probably following now. And his wife couldn't take in. And, you know, when they were done, we're about to leave. I asked him, I said, what would you want the Lord to do? And then prayed for them. And he sent me a text. I think it was on our way to Bauchi now. On our Kogi. No, no, Bauchi. It was on our way to Bauchi. I just got a text. He said, Apostle, the text is still on my phone. He said, I called to tell you that my wife went to the hospital. And they said, I think she's three or a month pregnant. say results shout it listen results are evidences that god is alive not just an evidence that a man is anointed it's much more than that it's much more than that it's much more than that during our dinner we'll be playing some videos i hope that the media would consider that i don't know what their plans are but i hope that they should incorporate that and one of the things that we're going to be doing is playing clips and showing you a few pictures of some of the external ministrations and some of you will marvel and wonder marvel and wonder at the hand of God and what he can do when a man is anointed I've said it and I will say it again and again the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference how can the anointing make a difference when it is the difference it is the very difference when all is said and done the grace that comes upon the life of a man i have found david my servant and with my holy oil i have anointed him and the enemy shall not exert upon him and then he reads on and he says and in his in my glory shall his horn be exalted listen let me tell you something i have come to respect the anointing not because of what it has done in my life alone but this ministry you see is a place of possibilities the testimonies the tearful testimonies that have come and it's not just because of joshua selman take the anointing out of my life and i'm as empty as this chair you see are we together someone's life is going to be changed because of the anointing someone's life will rise because of the anointing listen after you've worked on your gift your gift needs to be anointed it's one thing to be gifted but is your gift anointed it says the spirit of man is the candle of the lord but candle without fire on it cannot give illumination are we together there is an anointing that can come upon you and change the dimension of your entrepreneurial exploits and you will see things happen that you never believe there is an anointing that can come on you and your academic career just skyrockets in a way and a dimension there is an anointing that can come upon your music ministry so much more than the vocal competence and your work you lift a voice and sing a song and that song becomes somebody's healing that song becomes someone's I was watching a video today covenant christian center and i was watching their their um leadership their, their summit that they hold their yearly summit and i was listening to some speakers and while they were talking i said my god these guys are not just business moguls they are they are absolutely anointed absolutely anointed are we together thou anointed my head with oil you did not anoint my cup you anointed my head but that anointed translated to my cup overflowing there is a relationship between what is on your head and what flows from your cup thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over In 2nd Kings chapter 4, 
the wife of the son of the prophets went to Elisha and Elisha said what do I need to do to you what is what is wrong what is the problem and she said you know this and that there is this situation and then he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing thy handmaid had nothing except a little cruise of oil and he said that's it he said go and borrow vessels verse 3 go and borrow vessels from all your neighbors he said borrow not a few borrow not a few if you increase capacity every oil assumes the shape of the container that holds it if i pour this water on the cover listen if i pour this water on the cover the cover will limit the water this makes this water look as though it is triangular pour it in a plate the plate will become like that thank you are we together the anointing and then when she got it he now told her he said go and close the door when the prophet was talking the anointing is a living thing it was hearing it was hearing the discussion and the moment she did that she began to pour the oil the oil began to multiply listen it's not enough to be anointed you must be anointed at a level that can command notable results it's not enough to be anointed the anointing is like currency the anointing is like currency hundred naira can buy sweet but hundred naira cannot buy shoe but it is still money so don't say i'm anointed the bible says acts chapter 10 right when paul was speaking in the house of cornelius the salvation of the jews in verse 38 he said how god anointed look at the extent to which god anointed jesus so it's not just that jesus was anointed look at the extent how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and then the bible says on the strength of that anointing he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil why for god was with him the anointing is not an instrument to shake and fall down and roll no those are just effects of the anointing on the human body and then alongside with other spiritual dynamics that happen at the point of impartation but the proof that a man is anointed is not shaking results results i don't care whether you shake like a leaf results brothers and sisters i just want to praise i lift my hands to say i love you you are everything to me and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your Jesus are you the Messiah is it true that the anointing is on you and Jesus said all right watch this the blind eyes open the deaf ears hear and he said go back and tell John how do you know a man who is anointed results results don't trivialize results it's not all about the results are you joking what then is it about results lives changed results hallelujah when there are miracles and signs and wonders and lives transform you speak to someone and just one prophetic word turns his life around you've had all kinds of testimonies here someone with jam result 140 something after prayer you come back 260 something how do you explain that is the anointing a woman barren for eight years returns with triplets no cs how do you explain that results are we together 
results. A whole family almost ravaged with HIV. That cause and it's not by sleeping around and just one prayer and everyone is healed. Not just one person. It's called results. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. You may be criticized, but you will never be ignored. Once the anointing of the spirit is upon the life of a man, upon the life of a business, Satan will raise criticisms. Why? So that your word will not be heard. So that you will not be believed. And so that people will not be blessed. But here's what the Bible says. You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. The truth was buried only for three days. After three days, it came back to life. Results. Results. Notable results. Not just results. It says the spirit of the Lord. Please give us Isaiah 61. The messianic prophecy. It was a prophecy about Jesus Christ. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says. For he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor. To bind up the broken hearted to set the captives free. Are we together? And then he continues and he says to proclaim liberty to the captives. And all of that to proclaim the year of vengeance of our God. And all of that to comfort all those who mourn verse 3. And then he says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. That's what the anointing does. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for the garment of praise right oh I'm, I'm the oil of joy for money the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness then he says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he through them might be glorified that they may be called oaks of righteousness brothers and sisters when a man comes to a ministry wretched terrible not born again and something happens to him it's called the anointing you get born again you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Your life is transformed. Your mindset is changed. You become a leader. You become an ambassador of the kingdom. Then you are now anointed again to reproduce say The anointing. There is nothing one of our core values as you know in this ministry is the anointing. We believe in the anointing and we believe that anything that is done outside of spiritual empowerment is a waste of time. Absolutely. So you will see the technical department preparing as though they are prayer band. Because everything is done with respect to the anointing. They believe that the sounds are not just instruments of physics. They are spirit and life. Are we together? Listen. Please hear me. I do not boast to have risen so far. Compared to where I need to go, I am just starting. But I can tell you this. I have had the privilege of mentorship to clean upon the shoulders of those who represent the systems of God upon the earth. And this is what they have done. And this is what they do daily. The keys are finite. The keys are not infinite. But every one of them is important for the door to open. The keys to your destiny, they are not infinite. They are not so many. But each and every one of them must be there in place. It's like a code. Your passion for God. A transformed mind. Your gifts and your abilities. And then the anointing of God upon you. No, no, no. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. It's my prayer that after this teaching someone will not just hear and say wow this was nice honestly when you see me talk like this I talk from my heart because this is it you know sometimes you can be looking for what you don't even know it is but when someone who has found it says look this is what you are looking for don't go around and waste your time and come back and say ah, ah I didn't know it was like this hallelujah Holy Spirit you are welcome Fill this temple With your presence Make sure you talk to him while praying
Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome to our lives and destinies. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, we wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, I wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you. Please pray, please pray, those outside, you can come in, clear the way for them so they can come. I want you to sing the song. It's not a special number. Fill this temple with your power. That's what we need. The anointing upon our lives. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple. We wait on you. Spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Shabarataya. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. This is my prayer, Lord. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place.
to mean business with your destiny ah. I want you to mean business with your destiny don't worry about the rain there are people who will direct you strategically don't be distracted Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Father, I declare that my mindset must change. Lift your voice and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Are you praying? Change my mindset. Change my mindset. Change my paradigm. listen to me the quality of your life on earth is dependent on your level of mental transformation not every information is needed and useful for your destiny the fact that you are getting informations does not mean you are growing the fact that you are learning new things does not mean you are rising the information you are getting must be needed and useful it must be needed and useful I like you to pray and say, Lord, the grace to edit everything that is not useful for my life and destiny. Lift your voice and pray. the right knowledge the right information the right knowledge the right information hallelujah hallelujah it's raining but we're still praying hallelujah 
apologize to some of those who are at the aisle outside. Sincerely apologize. Hallelujah. As much as possible, if they can find any place, even if it's just outside, let's see how we can help them. But regardless of what condition you are in now, let me tell you, it is profitable what you are doing. Because it will pay you more than money in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, what have you put in my life that should bless my world? Reveal it, reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord my gift Lord the ability that you have put within me in the name of Jesus Christ I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost there is an ability, 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 there is an ability within my spirit, there is an ability that can change my life, there is an ability that can change my environment. Hallelujah. 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 We're praying. The Bible says there is this treasure. The vessel containing it may be earthen, but the treasure is not earthen. It says there is this treasure in Joshua Selman. There is this treasure in Koinonia that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. I like you to say every gift you have put in me, Lord, bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Lift your voice and pray. Every hidden potential. Every hidden potential. I'm rising beyond recession. I'm rising beyond limitation. There is a gift in me. There is a gift in me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, not because you are tired of sitting down. He said, They that sat in darkness, the city of Nephtha and Zebulun, he said, They have seen a great light. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible says for darkness, confusion shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people. He said, but upon you, his glory shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles, hallelujah, Gentiles shall come. You will not look for them. Gentiles will come to your light. Gentiles will come. You will not publicize. There is an unction. There is a gift. There is an ability. Gentiles shall come to your light, then their kings to the brightness of your rising. It says your gates shall be continually open. They will not be closed day or night to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Listen. I want you to lift your voice and cry and say all those who have been ordained to honor my gift 
I call them into my life. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Everyone in every territory, call, ordain, anointed. Everyone call to honor your gift. Your capacity, your education, your skill, everyone ordained of God, everyone ordained of God, everyone ordained of God to honor what you carry, call them forth by the power of the prophetic, by the power of the prophetic. I call them, I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I command them to appear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you what the Bible says. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And to him that seeketh, he will find. And to him that knocks, the door will be open. When you knock on that door, it will open, I assure you. I like us to pray. I like you to cry for a fresh anointing that will lift you higher. You are not down, but where you are is the limitation of the unction in ministry, in business. There is an oil, there is an unction. Thou anointest my head with oil. Lift your voice and pray for more. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Upon my life, fresh grace. Upon Koinonia, new levels, new dimensions of kingdom exploit. For the sake of His Majesty. Oh, upon my life, upon my life, I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be ordinary. There is a supernatural anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, taking me higher, taking me higher. The power of the Holy Ghost, a superior unction upon my life, a superior unction upon my business, a superior unction. Hey. Upon my marriage, a superior unction, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. It's raining, but hear me. I am a living testimony that when a man cries unto God, he can hear. The last two or three months, 
have been phenomenal seasons of my life stepping into strange operations of graces and unctions testimonies beyond imagination you can pray it through genuine desire a heart that is thirsty thou son of David have mercy on me thou son of David anoint me affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me I'll take my life, breathe on me. of Solomon says because of the ointment so do the virgins love thee because of the ointment so realms you have never entered will come to you it's not just talking of women because of the ointment upon my head so do the virgins love thee they desire to be with you We are going to pray I want you to pray this prayer with all your heart you are going to challenge every door of limitation see let me tell you honestly if we are to be truthful with ourselves there are people you are not down but you are not up either you can move up when you are up you know you are there I like you to pray and say I challenge limitations you are a spirit and I speak to you this season you are living, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I challenge limitation over my life. I challenge limitations. I challenge limitations. Everything fighting my anointing, fighting my influence, fighting the glory of the Lord upon Koinonia. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. We come with the rod of a higher priest. Hallelujah. We are going to pray again. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. Multiplied grace. Influence means a platform. A platform that can afford you an opportunity to shape the minds of people. I like you to pray. We have been indoctrinated that influence is a bad thing. Without influence, the kingdom cannot advance. The key to kingdom advancement is not just evangelism. It's influence the key and I if I be lifted up not if I be talked about I will draw all men the capacity to stand at the front line of systems and legislate and be a communicator of the realities of Christ I like you to pray and say Lord every influence destined for me I decree that the grace for it must come on me lift your voice and pray Oh, desire it. Your heart is pure. Influence. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles, 
access to kings access to men of influence access to custodians of systems hallelujah hallelujah when the devil marks that you have this stronghold he will no longer fight the prayer that is coming this is how satan mocks many men of god across africa before they pray the demon leaves joyfully because he knows he will come back he studies the mindset and finds out that it has become a stronghold the door has been opened and has been hinged to something to keep that door open and the spirit says i can stroll around the service will soon finish and i will route through just one door of ignorance and i'm back to the life back to the business are we together very very powerful so this gentleman as he's transformed something is happening to him you will find out prophecy now you will see the potential of the prophecy or the prayer or the deliverance as you would call it it will show in his transformation so he can return and say 10 years ago watch this once upon a time i was poor or i was weak or i was under all kinds of yokes and all of that then a day came when that spirit or that influence over my life was addressed by the power of god comma and then i subjected myself to a season to learn the ways of god and the holy ghost the more i expanded my spiritual capacity the more his potential the richness of his anointing and his presence manifested through me now look at my life i'm a testimony from here to here i never want this place to just become a place of miracles ah there's a service so let's go you'll be healed you'll be blessed i agree but i i disagree that you'll be sustainably blessed sustainably healed sustainably lifted except that in addition to the prayer and that which you will receive tonight you must contend for knowledge this kingdom is knowledge based and not any kind of knowledge you are not at liberty to choose what you want to hear no there is a body of truth already allocated you are not given the luxury of inventing what you want it may not be comfortable to your your status quo or whatever church or whatever teaches you listen you must submit yourself to the whole counsel of god not the one that looks pleasant to you doctrinally speaking if you want to stand balanced and to receive the victory to walk in the fullness of the victorious life then you must submit yourself to the body of truth allocated to bring you results imagine with me for instance that this were a student and then a lecturer is teaching and he says i don't like this course maybe a medical you're a doctor so imagine a very difficult medical course and then he's saying i don't like this one i like this one now you already know that this guy is in trouble there is a reason why he's thought that as uncomfortable as this you have to love your future as a doctor more than the pain to settle down and say I, I may not like it it doesn't i mean who would want to touch a cadaver who would want to walk with a dead body who would want to keep giving people injections all around i mean these guys just inject people and do all kinds of things who would want to do that but you have to do it that's the only way the uh what the, what's inside that the um drug will get into your body there's no bluetooth for it it has to go directly <laughs> are we together so this guy may look cruel while he's giving you that injection you have to choose health or to just have a temporal comfort and you endure the thing and receive it for a few days and after that you are fine this is it it's amazing that the believers that choose what to believe that means that um by let me explain what i mean the believers that sit down and select what to believe according to the comfort it provides are the people who don't have results isn't it funny that believers who do not have results are the ones who sit down and choose and say no 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 um i don't like this i like this i don't like this it's pride 
the Bible says when you are ready to receive, there is a quality that is required. It's called meekness. That you receive with meekness the engrafted word. You must embrace the whole counsel of God to experience all of God. Are we learning? What I'm sharing with you is very powerful. This is what will give value to the prayers that we'll have. You know, Africa, we like prayer. And prayer is good. But visionless prayer that is not seen as one of the keys that connects to other keys will only continue to be a dissipation of energy, flattery in religion, and will never produce results. The value of prayer is in the role that it plays while other kingdom principles are kept. Prayer does not just work generically, regardless of your obeying other principles. It's why we continue to dissipate spiritual energy and convince ourselves that based on the pain that comes in prayer, God must be answering. Spiritual things are interconnected and the entire system must be healthy for you to experience all of God. If you choose a dimension and leave the rest. So we have people who are always praying. Always delivering something. Always casting out demons. Now please, I, I, I don't say it with, with, a, with a heart of sarcasm at all. Don't, don't find offense in any way. This way, you will never become a portrait of the victory of Christ. It will never truly happen. It was never supposed to be an endless pursuit forever. What then is the excellency of the finished work of Christ? Then on the other hand, we have those who continue to flatter themselves that just by default they are free. Oh boy. And their lives continue to show that this is not correct. When they are sick, they don't say Christ paid for my sickness. They go to the pharmacy and then they believe that every other thing is all right. The possibility of sickness, the possibility of defeat, no matter how temporal, is already a clue that victory is established in Christ from the prophetic standpoint. But it takes your engaging with God to make it manifest. And people stop here and continue to flatter themselves that they are free until they head to the grave. Are we together? I shall not die. You are deteriorating. No, no, God forbid. I know that I'm fine. You are going down. You are having all kinds of dreams and nightmares. You finish praying immediately and lie down. The spirit says, he's asleep now. Let's continue. And you get up and say, I didn't see anything. You are joking there. Until they kill you in the spirit and you wake up and die physically back again. There is something called the death of a fool. It is the death that comes as a result of assumption and pride and ignorance we must embrace the whole counsel of christ if you did not prosper by default then you will not stay healthy by default you will not stay delivered by default it has to be engaged through growth they are stabilizers they provide the dimensions of your stability if you're with me say amen, amen. this is the second thing we must learn because I, I, I continue to get tired of believers again and again. It is this, if this kind of teaching does not come, the danger is that you, the man of God, who is always doing the deliverance, you are in trouble. Number one, you will be idolized. And that is not healthy for you. Are we together? Number two, you will be weary. Because even if you delegate someone and say, pray for them, they'll say, I've gone. You do your own prayer again. And you will continue. These people will wear you out. You must know the truth and know it enough to set you free are we blessed I wrote something down here our spiritual efficiency as far as living in victory and advancing the cause of the kingdom is concerned will require specific knowledge of the ways the principles the methodologies of the kingdom praise the Lord I think there was a time a gentleman sent me a very funny text. I know that he was just, a, I don't know if he was a, a male, female, or he just sent me a text and said, Apostle,
God has called you to be an apostle to preach Christ crucified, not principles and not systems and strategies. I started interceding for the guy because his, his life will be a compendium of pain. I guarantee you. You see, time is a revealer. And it's terrible to carry so many people in your ignorance only to find out after many decades that you are in trouble. There is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the way. Jesus the way. Jesus did not just say, I am life. He said, I am the way. A methodology. It is still Jesus. This man who was proposing that believed that for whatever reason that the teaching of the principles of the kingdom would veer people away from Christ if it's not taught with balance if it's taught as an end to itself and not a means to an end I didn't even reply I just felt I love the person who knows maybe the person is following today I just hope that the person has grown because this kind of copycat pride is what is responsible for the eventual pain of many people where a man of God will stand and not know what to believe again your ignorance has been represented in every dimension. And now you stand and wonder, what do I do? You must be men and women of conviction based on the truth of God's word. Listen, if you do not know the ways of God, the primary way that we know God is through scripture. The second way we know God is through the names of God. The third way we know God is through the person of Jesus. Jesus, the Bible calls him the, the, the express image of the invisible God. And the last way we know God is through experience. There are not many other ways. These are the ways allocated. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation. It takes wisdom. To see the potentials of salvation in your life it says that you draw with joy out of the wells of salvation when you know god and encounter him he will expose you to his ways it is the knowledge of his ways that brings beauty and glory to your christian life are we together Two scriptures and then we'll pray. Thank you, Megan. Exodus chapter 6 to our business for the night now. Exodus chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will read you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm. And with great judgments. Seven. And I will take you to me for a people. And I will be to you a God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. How do you know? By the mighty arm. There is an experience that I will give you that will cause you and validate to you again that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Psalm 34 and verse 19. Please look up. It is not the best of God that believers are challenged. However, it is also not unusual in the economy of God that believers are challenged. Listen very carefully. It, while it is true that it is not a, the best reflection of the Zoe life, if and when believers are challenged in any aspect of their life, it is the flawlessness, the dexterity, the ease of their lives show the multifaceted dimensions of God. However, because the treasure is in earthen vessels, it is also not unusual Please listen carefully and deliver yourself from the ignorance that people continue to propose that make believers feel guilty for being challenged. God, in his dealings with men, 
knew that there will always be room here and there are we together for the devil to seem to find a place and negate the reality of the victory of Christ and so God allocated all kinds of systems so that if for any reason as a believer you find yourself in a predicament that is not consistent with what the Bible says should befit you when you are a partaker of eternal life you don't feel bad you can now begin to engage the systems allocated here's what the Bible says many are the afflictions not of a man many are the afflictions of the righteous not a righteous the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous not the affliction of sinners there is something called the affliction of the righteous now it doesn't really matter how it came the most important thing is that it is there and that there is a provision next um it says but the lord this is your advantage many are the afflictions of an unbeliever but he will remain there because he does not have the lord as his anchor but many are the afflictions of the righteous the advantage of the righteous in affliction is that he has the lord who can deliver him out of them all out of them all so the embarrassment is not the challenge listen believers stop allowing challenges to make you feel i'm not a christian maybe it's because i did not pray no no not at all not at all the bible tells us that many are the afflictions so it is not unusual when your prayer request is almost a notebook many are the afflictions of the righteous he says but the lord delivered him so god is a deliverer he delivers he delivers him what is deliverance i've taught you deliverance doesn't just have to do with spirits no is the part in a way separation between you and the obstacles that impede your progress it's called deliverance the moment a platform is created where there is a separation between you and the influences that impede your progress be it demonic be it mental be it physical in whatever variation and fashion it comes the lord delivered him out of them all many are the afflictions of the righteous so it is possible that a pastor can have his children go haywire and while that is happening rent issues financial issues while that is happening maybe his spiritual life is going down while that is happening and he sits and feels bad and some ignorant believer comes and say oh dear it's just because you don't know god your life no no the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but when you remain there then you agree with that situation that the victory of christ is a lie that means when you find yourself in that situation the revelation of the fact that the lord can bring you out should not allow you to sit there comfort um, comfortable are we together don't find comfort in that situation you get up and begin to press the woman with the issue of blood knew she understood that she was a daughter of abraham the one who was took uh, you know bound she did not know but this one knew so she could not heal herself but she was already rehearsing oh jesus should come around this place as soon as jesus came she knew already she pressed and touched the helm of his garment never become comfortable when your life is yet to reflect the full potentials of that which comes with the life of god the victorious life your assignment as a believer is to continue to scan through every area of your life to give thanks over the areas that are now reflecting in experience and in reality the victory of christ but then to write down and begin to deal decisively with the areas that are yet to conform to the the reality of the victory of christ i love naaman the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He says he was a very valiant man. 
So in one aspect of his life, he was doing exceptionally well. Then the Bible says, but he was leprous. And I'm sure Naaman just said, oh, at least I'm a captain. It's all right. I can live my life like that. But a little slave girl came to plant dissatisfaction. She said, oh, that my Lord would listen to me paraphrasing there is a prophet that you can go to in israel and you go to that prophet and this other side of your life will also come and you know come under alignment and he dragged himself there long story short at the end of it the bible says he became his body became as fresh as that of a child don't be ashamed of your challenges and your pain but don't be comfortable with them either you should be doing something praying about it reading about it there's there has if you are at ease when things are not going well it's a sign that you are not a serious believer it is true that you don't have the power as it were to, to minister healing to yourself but you should sit down and say look where do you know that god is moving where do you know this situation i may not have the power to change it but i know that this is not how a home should look like we are up today down tomorrow i have read in the bible that there is favor but i must sincerely admit that i've not seen it reflect in experience i will continue to confess favor i will never speak negatively but then i will partner with god in pursuit of the graces the places the dimensions that will make this become my experience that's how we walk in victory now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph are we together and so this this gentleman now he knows that this is what the Bible has said about his life that you shall be the head and not the tail he's born again he's believed it but he's becoming the tail almost forever and then he goes to read there has to be something wrong he doesn't know what is wrong but his dissatisfaction is attracting the spirit of wisdom you see that now he does not know what to do but one thing he knows is that his life is not yet a reflection of the word of god listen my brothers and my sisters the excellency of your knowing god is tested when you insist that your life becomes a reflection that insistence is what the bible calls faith it is not the wishing your insistence to see to it i know i don't have a child now no problem i will not kill myself many are the affliction so there's no embarrassment you can say whatever you want to say ah call me a barren well men are not barren, no. barren woman are we together impotent man whatever you want to call no problem however i've read in my bible that he can make the barren to become a joyful mother so i will not just conclude and say well god one day no 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 in your quietness you say lord just because i said thank you for my condition does not mean i will keep quiet i'm thanking you because the bible says listen the bible says in everything gives thanks is a law it has nothing to do with results i give thanks out of obedience but i insist out of faith Please sit down and learn what will give value to a miracle service tonight so that you will walk out of this place enlightened these pockets of gaps and imbalances why believers continue to mock themselves you insist and your insistence is luring the spirit of wisdom did the Bible not say through desire? Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1. Through desire, a man having separated himself, he says that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. As your desire begins to grow, there has to be a way. We can't be begging in this family. My father is a pastor, we are still begging. My mother is an intercessor, we are still begging. My brother is a banker, he's looking like a, like a, a farmer. He's looking like somebody who... who who just packs death on the road there has to be a way out i don't know the way but i know there is a way you see it now ah. oh, 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 oh. my lifting has come
your assignment listen your assignment as a believer is to keep looking at your life and looking at scripture and record what is not matching let that become your project no mat listen 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 in as much as you don't feel bad for where you are you also don't feel good for where you are you have to find the way of growing yourself into the dimension of you that becomes the full expression of the life and the power of god so a believer who is at ease is a foolish believer because there is a lot of conformity to be done you may be good in your prayer life but your finances is is rubbishing the other part of your your christian life so you must stay and say thank you lord for the one i've seen but show me the one i've not seen that's why the bible says meekness because you see let me tell you this when you have results in one area of your life usually you would deceive yourself into believing that one result covers for everywhere no you have to approach every aspect of the kingdom life uniquely that you're a prayer warrior doesn't mean you are prosperous that you are prosperous does not mean you have character you have to approach these dimensions per dimension until every one of it and let me tell you this the more you conform and receive results the more christ can be seen through you people look at your life and they can see the completeness they know that this is how a believer should look like if you see me limping i'm a human being human beings can limp there is nothing to be ashamed of the best are we together now if you see me hungry and i'm not fasting glory be to god i'm still alive but that's not god's best for me because if i'm hungry continually i will die are we together hunger can kill it doesn't kill in one day but eventually poverty will not destroy you in one day but you continue the day your children can no longer go to school you will be surprised at what you will do for money it's true that you can say look we don't need a crowd even if it's five people the most important thing is we are doing well excellent after 10 years of five people you will see whether you will remain in ministry or not it is in the multitude of men that is a king's honor are we together so tonight listen to me listen to me very carefully tonight is a prayer of addition lord thank you for this but this area of my life lord you've not visited it yet and i'm i'm i give thanks but i came for this miracle service thanking you for the one you did march april but also admitting that my life is not yet in experience a reflection of all that should be is someone ready to pray lift your voice in one minute and cry to the god of heaven It is not unusual for believers to be afflicted but to remain at ease in the presence of affliction is a sign of insensitivity and a sign that you do not know the counsel of God let God be true let God be true and every man a liar let God be true and every condition a liar Please pray. Shakros Kebaratushia. We are still praying. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Listen. Please hear me. In fact, I will, I will, media, if you can do a podcast of this charge uh, and put it separately, I think people will be blessed hearing it. This thing you just had is real deliverance for someone because it's explaining to you why the devil is not afraid of you no fortification that comes through knowledge hear me please tonight is not a night to be ashamed lord i thank you for this but mention the areas that are not yet there and be sincere listen let me tell you listen listen to me listen to me listen to me 
the Bible says as I hear you declare before my ears not as you wish there is nothing to be ashamed of are we together now when you come before God this is like a threshing floor when you go to an injection room with the doctor if they say turn and receive injection you don't say ah doctor no 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 no, no. that's that's not his business the doctor is free you are the one who is in trouble are you getting what I'm saying now yes listen to me if there is is any aspect of your life that is not yet reflecting the reality of the Christ life don't feel bad don't let it tear down what God has done give thanks for the one he has done but release your faith and say Lord I know there is more and I'm here tonight as a token of my insistence that my life must become a perfect reflection of all the possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Psalm 34 and verse 17. God will only arise to separate you from the hindrances that impede your progress in life when you call. The righteous, the same righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord delivers that righteous, but it does not come by default. That same righteous, the righteous must have to cry and say, Lord, I know that many are my afflictions. I give you thanks in pain, but bring me out of pain. Bring me out of pain. Lift your voice and cry. Please lift your voice and pray. Pray like a priest. Pray like one who is tired of this dimension. Separate me tonight, oh God. Separate me from the influences that impede my progress, that impede the fullness of my destiny in Christ. chapter 21 verse 1 and 2 praise the Lord we are going to pray Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and 2 and the Lord visited Sarah as he said there was a day he said it but did not do it there was a day the prophecy was still in motion now the time came when what God said he now did and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said 
and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Verse 2. And Sarah conceived. This is the proof that God visited her. Something happened in her life that did not happen before. Something happened in her destiny. There has to be proof of something today that was not there yesterday. Lord, visit me tonight. Lift your voice and cry for a visitation. Visit my church. Visit my ministry. Visit my finances. Visit my spiritual life. Is someone praying? And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman. One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Please listen. One more prayer point. Listen carefully. He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve me. They are not just going out for nothing. Tell Pharaoh, my people need to serve me. But this slavery is a distraction. Tell poverty. My people need to go. But if you don't let, they cannot serve me. Tell failure. Tell delay. Tell defeat. Tell Tell a slow place of growth. Tell barrenness. There is a prophet who should have been born. You are stopping the generation from experiencing a prophet. Hallelujah. Now let me give you the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Listen. Anything that will give you the comfort to allow you to reveal Christ and focus on the agenda of God is God's business. The moment you bring his kingdom in the picture, hey. let me tell you, whether you invite it on him or not, it is his business. The key to getting God's attention is to bring Christ into the picture. The moment Christ and the purposes of God is in the picture, God's attention is drawn. What is going on here? When David came to threaten the nation of Israel, it was not a threat. It was, it was not just a threat to a king. It was a threat to a covenant and the continuity of God's program. And he raised David. And David said, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Haman 
was plotting to destroy the nation of Israel. God said to kill my people so the Messiah will not come. This is my business now. Let me tell you the truth. Your challenges will remain your business oh, until you bring Christ into the picture. Until you bring the agenda of God. Lord, give me peace so I can serve you. Give me speed so I can serve you. Increase so I can focus. Kabaritata. Shaliz Kabaru Zepediagata. Pray unto the God that doeth wonders. Lift me, O oh God, so the nations can see your name and your praise. Let the oil come upon my life. Let the anointing come on my destiny. Mention the area that must reflect Christ in your life. Thank you for this area. But Lord, I arise for this one. I place a demand by faith. I insist by faith. listen please listen to me I want you to be very sensitive the spirit of faith is strong in this place please listen we'll be very fast tonight the real revelation is what you have received now the prayer the miracles and this is something that just comes in one sweep this is the sustaining factor you will marvel and wonder what begins to happen to your life because these are the things that are bought prophecy if you don't put them in place you are wasting your time it doesn't matter what comes please hear me whether you are outside following online please I want you to listen there is a God that doeth wonders and God can arise you see the thing with God is it is the process that takes time when the word comes, the word is quick, quick, quick. You came with all kinds of prayer requests and you think God will answer them moving one by one. Just one pronunciation and that's the end of it. It's gone. So we're going to be very, very fast. I, I sensed, please listen very carefully. I'm going to pray for people, but I sensed that one of the, the major things that the Lord wants to do tonight is first the healing you see every time you see death death and infirmity go together are we together now so the healing that that healing grace we're trusting God that people who have come with all kinds of devilish oppressions but they must be free and then number two I will continue to pray this until I see it in your life. I truly believe, listen to me, that there is a dimension of favor that the church, not just individuals, must shift into. Otherwise, forget about the ease to serve the purposes of God. This issue of God today, money tomorrow, God today, argument, finance, is, is, a, is, a, is a demonic thing. You must press for these graces as we pray. Hallelujah. Father, we have come again. You are the God that doeth wonders. The mighty God of heaven, we honor you and we bless you. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for healings. Thank you for prophecies. Thank you for the manifestation of your power. Lord, let tonight be a remarkable night. Shift people, shift people, shift people. Take away obstacles and hindrances from their lives. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going, please listen, we're going to be very fast. I already see several manifestations of the angelic in this place now. Um, for those of you who are coming here for the first time, listen, take away anxiety, just relax. There is a God who is mighty. He will so shift your life in a way that will surprise you. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Bring the lady under the anointing here. The power of God is coming on one lady here. We have to be very fast now. Just here. I'm seeing a strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. All about God to pray now Jesus the Lord is showing me I'm in a vision now and I'm seeing chains people's feet with chains and the Lord is saying this is what has impeded people from making progress you are moving but you are not making progress I'm about to pray for you now please whether you are an usher or not just help the usher so that we are very fast tonight I'm seeing chains I want to pray now in the name that is above all names, I declare by the Spirit, Lord, that anyone here under the sound of my voice, in any of the overflows, inside and outside, bound by darkness, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, be free. I cause those chains. I cause those chains. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. Overflow one. I'm seeing such a mighty deliverance. Overflow one. Just overflow one. I'm seeing the power of God come. We have to be very fast. But I'm praying now. You're going to shout that name that is above all names. Listen. This deliverance is not just for you alone. Some of you came and left your family members for years. You are still in the same spot. You love God, but there is no progress. I want to pray for you now. At the count of three, there's such a strong anointing. In the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, that name that is above all names, I tell you, if God be God, then any chain holding you and holding your family must give way. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I cost those chains now in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. Shake the inside and outside. I decree and declare. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's have them outside. Ushers, you should know that, please. So that we can hurry up and make progress. Shalibros kabaruda shalakatos kebriandas. Alusha brenda gede. We are still going to pray. I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it come on people, not just on chains, feet now. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every overflow, those following online. This shout of the name of Jesus again. I'm seeing families. What looks like a door on that chain it must live right now one two three i command every chain chain of darkness dying down people in the mighty name of jesus christ be free now i in the chain holy I need the chains holding. I hear the chains. I hear the chains holding. I hear the chains. I hear the chains holding. Hear me. The Bible says, 
now the Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. The same spirit that delivers, that heals, the Lord is that spirit, not another. It is the same Lord that gives salvation, that heals. The Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. I want to rebuke barrenness. Now, first physical barrenness. But then this barrenness is more than just physical barrenness. A state of unproductivity. And as I pray this prayer, many ladies prophetically, the power of God will come upon you, not necessarily because you are barren, but women stand as gates in the realm of the spirit. And God uses them to signify the opening of gates. In the name that is above all names, I declare right now, even as the Lord is revealing to me, there are all kinds of barrenness in this place. Physical barrenness, financial barrenness, spiritual barrenness. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost at the count of three right now that anointing is coming on people inside and outside. Those with physical barrenness issues God is stepping in right now. And those with all kinds of related barrenness issues, God is also stepping in. At the count of three, I declare it right now. One, two, Three, let that power touch you right now. Shake I release you. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you by prophecy. I release you. Enter a dimension of fruitfulness. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your business. I bless the word upon you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Madam, please stop this woman for me. Madam, please come. Your life is about to change. I don't know who this woman is. From the town. Come again, ma'am. From Sabo, from Sabo. From Sabo. I want to pray for you. Number one, please look at me, madam. The pain you experience at your back, huh? that back pain, the Lord is taking it away. Number Amen. two, Amen. God is stepping into your family. Amen. I'm looking at your family and I'm seeing that Amen. your family needs a real miracle. This is, this is an array of witchcraft. And if we don't pray, it will take lives. People will die like chickens. But we're going to pray. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing Kogi State. Kogi State. The power of God is coming upon Kogi State right now. Right now I'm speaking. The power of God is a sign and a wonder how God does this, ladies and gentlemen. Kogi State. You see, for those of you who don't know, when God shows me that, the moment I mention the state, everyone who is part of that state, that anointing will touch them. It's, it's a sign and a wonder is a grace i declare right now whether you know your state or not i'm seeing that map and i send the word i declare by the spirit let that anointing i'm seeing fire rising call this state shalis kobarakakata prateka teka koka parukata embreketesha i command liberty by the spirit of the living god i command liberty by the power of the holy ghost that every planting that is not of God associated with that territory. I call for liberty now, now by the Spirit. Mama, please let me pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, Ma, and it will be like a dream. The way God will honor you and take away sorrow from your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mother. Honor this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Mama, I declare over you in the name of Jesus, let everything that looks like shame and reproach and sorrow over you and your family, I cast it out of your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jennifer. 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 I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to really... Jennifer. <laughs> Where are you from? Huh? I've seen this thing before and I've announced it in Miracle Service. There is something called Aleku. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm seeing that name again. Where are you coming from? Where is she from? State. You are from Benway yes, State. Yes, we have Aleku there. What? Eh? Aleku. This is what I'm saying. I know you now. I command that devil out of her life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, listen. The Bible says, even the captives of the mighty, the lawful captives, shall be delivered. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. Every challenge. Relative to the grace that confronts it. My friend, this gentleman, tap him for me. Don't worry, let me talk with him. Look at me. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? I'm stretching my hands now. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. Number one, the grace for intercession. Amen. Number two, the teaching ministry. Amen. I decree and declare. Amen. May you step into that dimension Amen. of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shift you by prophecy into that dimension of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside overflow one. The Lord is showing me an elderly woman. It's like you came with your daughter or something. You didn't come alone. Please, if there's such a woman, there come. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a woman. You came together with your daughter. We have to hurry up because we're going to pray for the sick now. Mighty God. This young lady, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That's the end of it. I release you right now from everything that represents captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from, Mama? I'm from seeing Abuja. hold on. You came by road? Yes, sir. Kaduna, Abuja. Where do you stay? I stay in a where are you from? From part of Niger. Abuja? The, yes. Like a boundary? Yes, sir. And that's where you are coming from? Yes, I want to pray for you. The spirit of death will leave your life and your family. Amen. My dear, this is your daughter? Is that lady your daughter? Yes, sir. I'm going to pray because this lady as young as she's seen. God is going to use her. There is a grace for favor that is on this lady. You see. Favor. Favor. That's your name. No, it's not like I'm doing an impartation. Huh? Your name is what? What's her name? Favor. Hear me, my dear. The Lord is going to turn your life. You see this lady like this? Don't worry about what you are eating or not eating. You hear what I'm saying? This lady, God is going to honor her. The first miracle God is going to do to your daughter is in her brain. Amen. Because this has been your prayer. Eh? Yes, sir. She's yes, not sir. doing very well in At school. All. This, listen now, let me talk to you. This lady is not a bad lady. She loves, she's a serious lady and a very good and disciplined lady. But this is an attack. I will pray for her. She will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what will happen to this lady. My dear, come, favor. Don't cry, eh? You came for miracle service. Father, the Bible declares that the memory of the just is blessed. I bless your mind. Understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
a family of four ladies the chain of marital delay is breaking now no 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 it's, it's not everybody I'm, I'm praying that this is an exact prayer to someone right now I'm seeing I, I just held this lady and the Lord showed me four one two three four ladies by the power of please why are they don't please don't bring people out that have not called please why are they here huh where is she from overflow one okay this is your daughter come mama where are you from where are you coming from we are from quarter two sir you are from quarter two quarter two yes sir. i have to pray for you there's somebody here when it's time to pray please no matter what overflow you are in um i want to pray for you by myself when they look at you they will think you are pregnant like very evidently pregnant but you are not pregnant this is i don't know what this is this thing is just protruding like this the power of god is coming on that person and that that demonic thing i curse it by the god of heaven he must let you go now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus mama can i pray for you in the name of jesus i'm praying for you man that everything that wants to cut short your life number one i come against it in the name of jesus and then number two i'm praying for you it's time for you to reap from the fruit of your labor in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ who is this why is she here okay jennifer what's wrong with her huh she's not feeling fine okay we'll, we'll pray for the sick ah. we have to pray oh. is she mad she's just not okay it's before that she was mad but now she was mad before yes when uh, it has been now uh one let's say eight months okay when she came here so she cannot talk and uh, other like that she used to this means when she's talking so she no talk normally okay we'll pray we're going to minister to the sick we have to if not we'll, we'll take all the night here but we'll pray for her can she hear me my dear how are you you can hear me yes i will pray for you eh? and jesus will heal you because i'm already seeing this lady inside a coffin with what i'm seeing this lady will not cross this year they will just say survive by but there is a god in heaven <laughs> hallelujah we have to pray i hope they are not just coming out at random do we have huh? i didn't ask them to come out i said protocol you people should be able to work with the people so that we don't have you are the one come where are you from paladin paladin yes. place your hand on your stomach do you believe in jesus yes you believe in the power of the holy spirit yes. have you gone to the hospital yes i've done many scans what did they tell you is there nothing nothing and yet the stomach is growing and you're not pregnant are you married about to sir. about to marry is your husband here yes sir. husband come where is he the lord wants to save a big major marital problem now <laughs> Answer. come thank you eh? please don't be embarrassed we love you god just wants to save you very little things like this can tear marriage not into two into pieces and want to want to help them where are you coming from sir from somewhere this is what are you trusting god for healing sir and god provision for the word healing and god provision provision yes sir. Uh, are you working no sir did you apply for a job? Yeah, I've been applying, sir. Because I'm looking, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a letter. This is why I'm, I'm saying. We are going to pray. This is your first time here? No, I've been coming. Okay, been, okay. I will pray for your wife first. Eh? If not, um, I hope I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? but God is trying to save you from what will make you hate someone you are loving so much now. My dear, beloved Jesus, put your hand there. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. You, you see how this kind of demonic things are. The stomach is protruding and the machine is not even saying there's fibroid or something. At least if it says there's something, you know what to remove. The machine is showing that this woman is perfectly healthy, yet her stomach is protruding. If you don't understand now, you can put this innocent brother in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? You see how the devil works? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare now, watch the power of God. The power of God. Oh, this, let me tell you, the anointing is very powerful. It's not for showmanship. It's like a drug. Just enters your system and it will rubbish anything that is not God. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit madam let me tell you the truth you will not waste even if it's one day to be pregnant when it's time I'm saying this by the Spirit of God and this I'm seeing like a black band tied around your stomach I lose it right now and I release you I set you free from this in the name of Jesus my friend I pray for you look at me sir you believe in Jesus the budget I'm seeing is very much. You have not even gone, you have not gone near halfway the budget. Eh? Don't be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassing you. You need a real miracle. This one is not just a destiny helper. You need a miracle. Because with what I'm seeing that you wrote as a budget, Ty. When is the wedding? 12th October. 12th of October. God is faithful, eh? I will pray with you. The prophetic dimension of wealth. Truly there is. Father. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Surprise this, my dear brother, more than enough for your wedding in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare be healed right now. Be healed completely in the name of Jesus. Be healed completely. Your name is Jennifer. Okay, I'll pray with you. Come. I'll just lay hands on you. All this Jennifer, I'll just lay hands. I'm not getting any. Hold her. Collect the child, please. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, take away this reproach that I see in this family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning. In Jesus' name, please come quickly. In the name of Jesus, come, my dear. May the Lord bless you and honor you. Come. Reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus. The power of God is coming on one ushering lady. It's an ushering lady. I'm seeing a mighty deliverance. Reproach is living right now by the Spirit. Whether inside or outside, I'm seeing one ushering lady. The power of God is coming upon her. Father, in the name of Jesus, let that miracle take away reproach. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take away reproach. You are Jennifer. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear. My dear, hold her hands, two of you. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Because both of you need the same miracle. And God is giving you that miracle. He's terminating shame completely from your life there is i'm seeing a man here you are a pastor i know there are many pastors i can presume but who is a pastor here sir please come you are a pastor where sir come again I'm seeing, what do you have? I'm, I can't hear you. Let him come. I'm seeing you. You came from where, sir? Benin. Benin. I want to pray for you. You have your church? I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. Stand up. You are going to write a book. The Lord is going to anoint you and you will write a book. God will use that book to bless the body and honor you too. It's a grace that I'm praying for you. Number two, sir. I'm seeing the Lord strengthening your understanding. There's a teaching grace that God is releasing upon you. I don't know you, and I'm praying for you. And then I'm praying for you. You will see the miraculous in a very strange way. 
you may not lay hands on people like this but the spoken word as you are speaking you will see god begin to honor you and things begin to happen can i pray for you sir in the name of jesus i release you into these dimensions in the spirit and everything that has been said i command that it must come to pass for you by the supernatural power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ the lord is releasing speed now please hear this i want to pray i know that i always pray for this but i'm about to pray right now there is a very strong anointing and it's coming on people inside and outside there are people who have compassed certain realms god wants to shift them please help them as that anointing comes sometimes they are going to begin to run by the spirit just run like this inside or outside father i'm the ah, my god i decree and declare right now by the spirit of god the grace that brings speed 10 years in one 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 by the spirit of the living god i command speed for you 10 years in one in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare speed over your life in the mighty name of Jesus I declare it you're not wasting your time you are receiving speed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ you are a pastor come it's time to enter a new dimension step into a new level of grace I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost signs and wonders through your hands in the name of Jesus I shift you into a new realm in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the anointing of the Holy Spirit going to the media stand just that media stand I'm seeing and it's still the same grace for speed I'm seeing media stand I'm seeing that grace there are people entering strange realms of speed that God is bringing. I release you by this word of prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus, no power in existence will stop you. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This lady on red. Come, quickly, please. I'm seeing you laughing in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is saying I should release you to your seasons of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you and I declare whatever must happen in your life for laughter to break out. I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. Let it happen to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are two ladies and three gentlemen. The real grace for the prophetic the prophetic I will do an impartation by the end of the service but two ladies and three men a real grace real grace the eyes the eyes to see I quicken that grace quicken that anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah grace please don't think we're wasting our time we're going to pray for the sick my dear come this lady god is visiting your family come and stand here where are your people where did they stay samaru. in samaru here let me tell you the month of september is a strange month of lifting for your family you believe that let me pray for you father in the name of jesus christ see let me teach you something you see the word of god is very powerful believe it believe it don't, don't sit arguing and saying will god touch me will he change my life no god will more than surprise you father in the name of jesus 
I'm praying for this lady and I decree and declare may the Lord grant you this miracle in the name of Jesus the Lord is touching someone at overflow too overflow too and the Lord is saying he's taking reproach away taking reproach I'm seeing the power of God come upon someone overflow too in the name of Jesus Christ overflow too hallelujah we're going to pray for the sick shortly but I'm seeing wow Usually, I would, not, I would not be the person to talk about these things, but when God does it, uh, we, are, we, we serve his purposes. I'm seeing a grace for miracle alert. This is why I kept quiet, because you will be surprised. That means you will see a lot inside, a lot of monies. There was no transaction to have necessitated it. Now, God does not do this to sponsor laziness, but it's a prophetic dimension. This is what I just saw. I declare by the Spirit of God, Father, every once and again you do this in this house to bring glory to your name. I pray by the Spirit of the living God right now, in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. For many of us, what will come upon you will, will take away financial pain financial shame in the name of Jesus Christ my friend what do you do come this man this what do you do a businessman sir. a businessman where in Dandume sir come again Dandume Dandume Katsina State Katsina State yes in Dandume I want to pray for you you love Jesus yes sir don't let anybody, don't be embarrassed, eh? Don't let anybody tell you to do anything diabolic for business favor. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. I yes, hope you're not embarrassed. Yes, sir. That, don't let anybody tell you that this is what he did that worked. And you too, you should do it and customers will come. It's not true. Listen, let me tell you, Paul can plant, Apollo can water. It's only God that brings increase. I want to pray for you. Father, what's your name? Sunday. Naemeka. What's that? Is there a name like that? Naemeka. Naemeka. I'm hearing that name. I will pray for you, sir. But the Lord is bringing, I'm seeing the Lord bring a very strange miracle to the person with that name. In the name of Jesus, I take away stagnation from your business. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit into abundance and into plenty. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the hand of God coming on several people for ministry. But listen now. This doesn't mean that you just get up and go and start doing ministry, but the call of God has been lingering on your life and it's time to answer that call I'm stretching my hands Lord I don't know where these people are overflow one overflow two overflow three online in the main auditorium here father anyone that your call up is upon his or her life I'm praying oh God confirm that call right now and let them know that it's not just their imagination i declare by the anointing and by the spirit of god draw them into their various callings into the various mantles the trainings the seasons that they must enter in the realm of the spirit to become mighty men and women of god in the name of jesus christ What's your name? Okay, I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may God grant you speed. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, huh? I take away everything in your mind that will stop you from being productive. I shift you to experience the hand of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We'll pray for the sick now, but I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. Enter the hand of a lady and then the ring breaks almost immediately. Now you know that this is already, it may be symbolic of marriage or the disastrous thing happening that just scatters it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, but I'm praying right now that anything that will push you into marriage to only last months old, in the name of Jesus, I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing an anointing, my God come for direction especially geographic direction the lord is showing me that there are people who came here praying they don't know exactly where to be based this is this this sounds funny but the lord there is an anointing that is coming giving you clear direction in dreams visions prophetic intuitions some of you are saying lord should i stay should i go should i travel should i stay in the country out of the country i'm praying right now the grace for accurate direction in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you we're going to pray for the sick now and all kinds of situations that don't represent the counsel of God we have to pray and trust God we're going to do this very 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 fast I keep seeing something in this front row just these people in front I kept ignoring it but I don't know what I'm seeing I'm seeing something that God is showing me everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was true restoration shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen there is somebody here the Lord is bringing an anointing into your life. You are getting into oil. Listen, listen, I'm serious now. Please listen to what I'm saying. This can be a life and death prayer. You see, this spirit of death that is just sweeping around, killing people like chickens all around. Someone will just say headache and fall down and die. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. And I declare every spirit of kidnapping, whether in Zaria here, Kaduna, that will just allow wicked people to come and kidnap innocent people. We, we cause that spirit and we bring the perpetrators under judgment. More prayer points were done. The dimension of the demonstration of the spirit, signs, wonders, miracles, the gifts of the spirit. I call that dimension. Whatever dimension is missing in your life, I speak to you. Please hear me, especially if you are in ministry right now and here tonight. Step into that dimension dreams visions the prophetic the gifts of the spirit being activated in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone who is weary you are tired life has just wrestled with your spiritual fervency and it's as though you are about to give up it's like the grace to continue is not there 
by the spirit of God I supply fresh fire for the journey every leader here whether a campus leader prayer group leader Bible study leader church pastor whatever kind of group I pray for you the dimension of grace that will keep the fire in your groups your fellowship burning I supply that grace upon you now we prophesy over Zaria we speak to the spiritual borders of this city to fight anyone coming into this city to cause trouble or cause confusion in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you every request and every issue that was the reason why you came here I agree with you in the name of Jesus that the next time you come here it will be to testify Jesus and any man who says over his dead body for you to rise may their prayer be answered this night thank you Jesus let me pray the last prayer of restoration I just sense it in my spirit whatever has left your life that should not have left whether it's money you lost money you lost friends, you lost valuable relationships. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of God, I call it back into your life now. I call it back into your life now. Praise the Lord. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, we are late, but we cannot close this meeting without giving me an opportunity to hand my life totally to Jesus. Please, let's minimize movement. This for me, I believe, truly without exaggeration, is the greatest miracle. I know that there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying, Apostle, I want to make my ways right with Jesus. You are here, overflow one, two, three, four. I want to give you an opportunity in two minutes. Please run overflow three now you can just move to your projector stand and overflow four because of time but if you are here overflow one two two b and then online please make your way here quickly let's celebrate them as they come you're saying apostle i want to win that war my friend keep stretching your leg carefully yeah you don't have to yes you the man with the crutch Keep coming, quickly, please. If there are people coming from outside, please clear the way for them so that they hurry up. Clear the way very quickly for them. Hallelujah. You're joining them. Please join them quickly. I believe there are still more people. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you and telling you to not let this meeting. The Bible says it is the goodness of God that calls men to repentance. Praise the Lord. If you're joining them, come, come quickly. Now, I salute every one of you. Thank you so much for making this decision. For those making this decision online, we salute you. Very quickly, I will request that you lift your right hand and please pray after me. Do it truthfully and passionately. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please join quickly. Please clear the way for them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I cannot help myself. I declare that I believe that you are my Savior, you are my King, you are my Lord. Tonight I receive by faith the abundance of grace, the gift of of righteousness and I declare 
that I reign in this life. From today and forever, I have eternal life. I'm a child of God, forward ever and backward never. Amen. Please keep those hands lifted. Father, we thank you. The Bible declares that whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Thank you for bringing this one, so God, to make their declaration. We declare according to the authority of Scripture that a new life begins for them tonight, a life of victory, a life of grace. In the name of Jesus, we thank you because they will go from glory to glory and from strength to strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Now, there's a gentleman waving his hands at the back. Please, all of you, just follow the gentleman in concert and there will be a group of people to receive you very quickly. Thank you for your patience. Well Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.